My name is Miss Jen and I am doing today's lesson with you. Um, before we start, have you gathered everything that we're going to need? What will we need? We'll need the class notes, which you can find in the description part of the video. Um, the class notes look like this. And you need something to write with and your Bible. So while you gather those things, you can press pause and I'll be waiting. Okay, guys, are you ready for turkey? It's almost turkey day and uh, the best thing about that is having all your family together, or at least some of your family. Um, Thanksgiving might look a little different just like our school year looks this year, but um, it's still, we have to count our blessings, right? Okay, so we're going to preview uh, a couple of stories, uh, thing, Bible stories that you guys have um, already done with the other teachers. Um, so... When the Israelites sinned by worshiping false gods, God sent the Midianites against them as a punishment. The Israelites cried out for help, and God called Gideon to deliver them as a judge. Gideon was, wasn't courageous or mighty when, he, when God found him, but God promised to be with him and help him to defeat the Midianites. So God can use anybody, right guys? Even a weak person just like Gideon. So... There was uh, lots of men in the army, but God reduced Gideon's army to what number? Do you remember? That number was 300. Yes, God wanted the Israelites to understand that the victory was his and his alone. With 300 men, Gideon amazingly surrounded the uh, Midianite camp at night. They smashed their jars, blew their trumpets, and raised their torches God caused the Midianites to panic and fight each other. God gave the victory and the Israel God gave Israel the victory and they were free from the Midianites. The next judge we learned about was Samson who was set apart um, for God from birth to deliver the Israelites from the Philistines. Um, Samson was a Nazarite which meant that he couldn't um, eat or drink anything from grapes and he couldn't shave his hair. God gave Samson supernatural strength. What are some things that you remember that Samson did with his God-given strength? 
he tore apart a lion, broke free from ropes, fought Philistines with a jawbone from a donkey. Um, and he did many more things. But Samson sinned by putting the woman he loved above uh, his love and obedience to God. So he told Delilah about his Nazarite vows, and she betrayed him to the Philistine, Philistines. God left Samson, and Samson was captured, blinded, and imprisoned by the Philistines. When Samson was brought before a large crowd of Philistines who were mocking him and God, Samson prayed and asked God to strengthen him one more time. God answered his prayer, and Samson pushed down the pillars supporting the building they were in, killing about 3,000 Philistines. Before we start today's lesson, there are a few terms that you'll need to know. When a woman marries a man, what does she call her husband's mother? What do we call that relationship? So they... They call them their mother-in-laws. So that's a mother-in-law. A mother-in-law is the mother of someone's husband or wife. The in-law part means that the family relationship is through marriage and not from birth. And what is the new wife to the husband's mother? So she's called the daughter-in-law, right? The wife is now a daughter by marriage. Last question. What is the term for a woman whose husband has died? What do you call the women whose husbands have died? They're called widows. A widow is a woman who lost her husband. Back in the Bible times, it was hard to survive as a widow, especially if you had no children. Women couldn't go out and get a job to provide for themselves like they can now. Today, we're gonna look in the book of Ruth. We will read about a woman who became a widow and how God used her faithful daughter-in-law to help her. This account happened during the time of the judges in Israel's history. So let's begin with some background. There was a famine in Israel. Remember, a famine is a severe shortage of food. And because of that famine, a man from the tribe of Judah named Elimelech moved from Bethlehem to Moab with his wife, Naomi, and two sons, Malon and Chilion. So let's answer number one of our class notes. Elimelech brought his wife, Naomi, and two sons to the land of, what did we say? He moved from Bethlehem to Moab, capital M-O-A-B. So Moab was a country that wasn't always friendly with Israel, but there must have been some kind of peace between them because at this time, that's where Elimelech chose to move. So while the, in Moab, Elimelech died. Naomi was alone with her two sons. Then each son got married. They got married to women from Moab named Orpah and Ruth. Years later, both of Naomi's sons died. Now she was left alone with her two daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. So Naomi's number two in your class notes. Naomi's sons, Malon and Chilion, married women from Moab named Blank and Orpah. What were those two names? Orpah and Ruth, capital R U. T-H. Elim number three. Elimelech and his two sons, what happened to them? They died, right? D-I-E-D. -E what are these three women called now that their husbands have died? The three women are called, what was that word? Widows. This was a sad and scary time for them. Remember, it was difficult to survive as a woman without a husband back then. So Naomi decided she sh 
she should go back to her hometown of Bethlehem in Israel. She told her daughters-in-law to go back to their uh, mother's homes so that they would be cared for. Orpah did as Naomi said and went back to her home, but Ruth loved Naomi and did not want to leave her alone. So let's turn our books, our Bibles to the book of Ruth, chapter 1. It's in the Old Testament. It's after Joshua and Judges. You can press pause and I'll be waiting. So Ruth 1, 16 through 17. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts you and me. So where did Ruth say she would she would go? She said she will for wherever you go, I will go, right? Wherever Naomi went, that's where she's she wants to go. Ruth loved Naomi. She promised to stay with her. Ruth loved the true the true God and the same God Naomi worshipped. How long did Ruth say she would stay with her mother-in-law? It says there, if anything but death parts you and me, so until where you die, I will die. So until they died, she wants to be with her mother-in-law. So yes, Ruth was willing to leave her people and their false gods to make Naomi and make Naomi's people, the Israelites, her people. She trusted Naomi, Naomi's God, and believed he was faithful to care for his people. Ruth remained loyal to Naomi and went with her back to Israel. And we'll find out how God would reward her faith. Number four, Naomi told her daughters-in-law to return where? To return blank, but Ruth refused to leave her. Naomi told her daughter-in-laws to return home, H-O-M-E, or Moab. Um, so Ruth went with Naomi back to Bethlehem in Israel. Back in Beth Bethlehem, they were poor and hungry. They didn't have any way to make a living. They were in trouble. But Ruth was a hard worker. She suggested that she go and pick up grain that was left after the workers harvested the fields. Back then, that's how poor people would get food. The workers in the, f in the fields were supposed to leave some grain so the poor people could collect it. As the Lord planned it, Ruth ended up working in the field of a man named Boaz. Boaz was a close relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. Boaz noticed Ruth. He instructed his servants to leave more grain for her. Then Boaz told Ruth to stay and collect food in his fields, where his workers would protect her and share their water. Ruth wondered why Boaz was so kind to her. She wasn't even from Israel, but from Moab. She was considered a foreigner. Let's find out how Boaz answered Ruth. We will read Ruth 2. Big number two, 11 through 12. <clears throat> and Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you, do not, you did not know before. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given to you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. It's beautiful. So, what did Boaz know about Ruth? 
she he knew all that she had done for who for naomi her mother-in-law right how she left her family and country and came to a people she did not know boaz had heard all about ruth what ruth had done to help naomi he prayed a blessing on ruth who was boaz praying to look in ruth 2 12. that's right he was praying to the Lord, the God of Israel. And what did Boaz ask for in verse 12? He asked that he would reward and protect Ruth, right? This is a great turn of events. Do you see how God sovereignly, sovereignly brought Boaz and Ruth together? Boaz was a relative of Naomi's husband. Boaz was impressed when he heard how Ruth had shown her love and faithfulness to her mother-in-law. He was impressed with Ruth's faith in the God of Israel. We will see that God would greatly bless Ruth and Naomi through Boaz. God would reward them just as Boaz had prayed. So number five in your class notes, Naomi and Ruth returned to the town of blank in Israel. Where did they return to? They returned to Bethlehem, capital B-E-T-H-L-E-H-E-M. Number six, Ruth collected grain in the field of who? Whose field was it? He was a close relative of Naomi's husband. It was Boaz's field. So capital B-O-A-Z. So turn to Ruth. 4, 13 through 17. Big 4, 13 through 17. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative. And may his name be famous in Israel. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Also the neighbor women gave him a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David, who would become King David. So did you get all that? There is a lot of important information packed into those verses. First, look at verse 13. What did Boaz do? He married Ruth. They had a, what, a daughter? No, a son. Yes, Boaz married Ruth, and God gave them a son. In verse 14, the women of Bethlehem praised the Lord for giving Naomi a redeemer. Let's learn what this term redeemer means. Redeemer means to buy back or free someone from distress. Was Naomi and Ruth, were they in distress? Absolutely. To redeem means to buy back or free someone from distress. A redeemer in buy in Bible times was a male relative who had the responsibility to help a relative who was in trouble or in need. Naomi and Ruth were desperate in need. They had no husbands to protect or provide for them. Because he was related to Naomi's husband, Boaz was able to redeem her by marrying Ruth and bringing them both into his family. Boaz took responsibility for the land that was Elimelech's. He brought it he bought it and used it to provide for Naomi and Ruth. God blessed Boaz's kindness and Ruth's faithfulness by giving them a son. Number seven in our class notes, a blank was a man who can help a relative in trouble. What was the definition we just talked about? What was the word? A redeemer. R-E-D-E-E-M-E-R. In verse 16, what does it say Naomi became to Boaz and Ruth's child? She, Naomi became his nurse. 
No longer was Naomi afraid and alone. She had a daughter-in-law, Ruth, her relative, Boaz, and now a precious baby to help care for. She would be the baby's grandmother. What was the baby named? The baby was named Obed. This was a very special family. Look at the verse at the end of verse 17. Who was the grandson of Obed? The grandson was David. Obed grew up and had a son named Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David, who became king of Israel. Number eight on your class notes. Boaz was kind to redeem Naomi and blank Ruth to care for them. What did he do? He married Ruth, right? So we're going to write Mary. M-A-R-R-Y. Number nine, God blessed Boaz and Ruth with a son named Obed. O-B-E-D. Number 10, Ruth became the great-grandmother of King who? King David. D-A-V-I-D. King David was related to someone very special. Um, um, Jesus Christ is called the son of David. Jesus Christ was part of David's family. Let's add that to your class notes in number 11. So num Jesus was born into the family of King David. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Ruth's great grandson was King David, who was in the line of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Ruth was faithful to the God of Israel, and God blessed her faithfulness in a very special way by including her in the line of Jesus, the Messiah. Our lesson started when a family of four left Israel and headed to Moab because of a famine. Naomi had no idea what was in store for her. She experienced great sadness when she lost her husband and, and sons. Yet God provided Ruth her faithful daughter-in-law, to come with her back to Israel when the famine was over. Naomi and Ruth were in trouble, and Boaz saved them from the poor situation they were in. Not only that, but because Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz were all faithful to God, he blessed their family with a baby, Obed. Their family would one day lead to Jesus Christ, the Messiah and Redeemer. Just like Boaz rescued Ruth, Jesus Christ has rescued sinners. We have nothing to offer him. We deserve only one thing, hell, because of our sins. But Jesus offers forgiveness for, his, for sins through his perfect sacrifice on the cross. Jesus is our redeemer. Just like Boaz was Naomi and Ruth's redeemer, Jesus is our redeemer. He took the punishment for sin and offers eternal life for everyone who trusts in him. So let's um, bow our heads and pray and let God know how much we trust our lives to him. And thank him for being our redeemer. Um, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. We thank you so much for our family and our friends, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that... Um, you would bless us all the days of our lives and bless our families and those that don't know you, Lord, that they would put their trust in you. We put our trust in you, Lord, and we thank you so much for redeeming us from our ourselves and, and our sin, Lord. And so we ask you for forgiveness, Lord, and um, we love you and we just pray to be more like you, Lord, for you are good and perfect in all of your ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, I hope you have an amazing Thanksgiving. God bless you all. Bye.